Let's talk about the first guy, which is Justin Fields. Let's talk about the quarterback because that's like the biggest the biggest thing right now, especially with the draft coming up. What are the Bears going to do? We just saw polls talking about, oh, we're going to do what's best for the team. Where does Justin Fields go? They're saying they've got offers from, uh, what was it, Vegas and Atlanta. So two good spots for Justin Fields to go in. Um, right now in Dynasty drafts, he is still going. I see him continuously going in the second round. Um, so like he's not really being devalued right now. I think people are people are wanting something to happen. Um, you know, especially if he goes to Atlanta, like I, that's a great situation, obviously. So obviously his stock is up at that point, but he's always been a great fantasy player. He's never been a great winner, at least in the NFL. Was that because of the organization, the position that he was put in, everything that was around him? Possibly, but there's there's a lot of turnovers, right? A lot of interceptions, fumbles, times where he had chances to win games and he didn't. And again, you could blame it on the stuff that is around him, but at some point, especially right now where he's got basically one year to prove himself because if he gets hurt or – he doesn't play well, and that's pretty much going to be it for him. So just a couple of quick things I'm reading up on it. Uh, obviously, the GM, Ryan Poles, said he doesn't think it would be right not to trade Justin Fields before free agency begins. Free agency begins on March 13th, mm -hmm. people. That is two, we two weeks and some change away. So yeah. it looks like something's going to get done in the next two, two and a half weeks. They're going to take Caleb Williams. And don't forget, the Bears still have the nine pick. <laughs> like, I think we forget about that in terms of like their plan and what they want to do. So and it makes sense for the Bears to do that because then they could reset the quarterback clock. Right. Mm -hmm. They can draft the receiver at nine. The Bears really, I think, would be smart to get something for Justin Fields. Um, I think the fact that he's still fairly young and has a fairly high ceiling. And I know we talked about a uh, high ceiling in fantasy versus a high ceiling NFL wise. And they are correlated because, you know, as you said, if Justin Fields doesn't play well this year or at least play, you know, up to what we think his potential should be going into year. What now Four. Mm -hmm. like w at that point in, in previous episodes, we basically said like, Teams aren't waiting around two and three years for guys to pop off. And just this is Justin Fields' fourth year he's going into. So he's really got to show some growth. He's got to show some maturity. He's got to so, show some poise in being able to win games and lead teams. So I I do think um, another quick tidbit I just wanted to throw in there as I was looking at Justin Fields' uh, breakdown was another team that isn't talked that you didn't mention was Pittsburgh, which I think yeah. would be interesting. I think they they're I don't I don't know necessarily if they ruled that out, but I heard that that was like the two teams that they actually have offers from are Vegas gotcha. and the Falcons actually right now, apparently. But yeah, man, like we we know the rushing upside is there. And I said this a year ago, because if you remember about a year ago, like there was a lot of hype on Justin Fields, right? They got DJ Moore. Cole Komet was still around and, and Justin Fields stock once they traded for dj Moore, really kind of went up in my estimation a lot of people got let down um for whatever reason and dj Moore was really good cole Komet was pretty good but justin fields was just eh, right they didn't win a ton early in the season they got hurt and 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 he got hurt once again right again. he missed a month <laughs> he missed a month so you know, that that's going to lead to, you know, a lot of questions. But as we said, the ceiling is there, man. He had a game against Washington in week five. Now, I know Washington was absolutely terrible, but he had 40 points the week before that against Denver when Denver wasn't great. Another 38 points. Um, but he's capable of those really solid games because the rushing upside is certainly there. So I just think that, you know, Justin Fields really, even if he has a QB like 12 finish, but the team that he goes to goes 10 and seven and makes the playoffs. I think that's a better look for him, especially mm -hmm. long term in terms of stability, sure. all that stuff. So I think that the two definitely correlate in terms of how you really feel. I've never been a big Justin Fields fan, and it's not just because I dislike the Chicago Bears. It's just because I haven't seen the progression as a passer that you see with other guys, right? Mm -hmm. Like you saw you you saw a progression from, and this is a bad example, but a Patrick Mahomes, but even, even a better comp is Josh Allen, right? By Josh Allen's fourth year, we were kind of like, yeah, 
right? They got Stefan Diggs and Josh Allen took off, right? And I'm not, I don't know if DJ Moore is as good as Stefan Diggs. He's, he's probably not, but still DJ Moore being there should have been the takeoff year for Justin Fields that we all expected and it didn't happen. So now people really have questions and it's like, damn, the, the Chicago bears are going to move on from Justin Fields. Now, if he goes to Atlanta, I like that. If he goes to Vegas, not crazy about it, but I think Atlanta is the best fit in terms of pieces around him. Solid defense. Atlanta has a decent O line as well. Obviously, you got Bijan, all the weapons that we know are there, and they got a new head coach, which I love probably more yeah. than all, all of those other parts. But yeah, man, it's this is a really, really big kind of make or break year for Justin Fields wherever he goes. Yeah, I was actually listening to the uh. The Bills coach earlier basically saying, you know, with Josh Allen, he was like, you know, I, I took I took the chance and if, I knew that if it didn't work out, I wasn't going to be here anyway. So, you know, I went and, you know, went and got my guy. I mean, and I think that's the main thing with the Bears is like they haven't been winning. Like there's all these questions. So if there's questions, then you don't believe in them. That's it. Just it's just a, you just don't believe in them. So, yeah, I think the better thing to do would be to just move on. Now, the smart thing to do and like all us fan ones, all us fans one is, OK, keep fields, trade back, build more on the team. But these guys, they don't want to do that now. Justin not Fields realistic. isn't the guy that they want, you know, so they're going to draft another quarterback. And they're going to either live or die by that guy. So. I'll tell you this right now. Even even, even with Justin Fields missing the four games, if they would have went nine and eight and made the playoffs as a seven seed and Justin Fields had the same exact season, maybe a little bit better productivity, he'd still be their quarterback. They trade out a number one, get a haul, and do all that. If they made the playoffs mm -hmm. this year, this would be a totally different conversation. And also, too, you got to factor in that the fifth year extension is going to kick in and they're going to have to pay this guy. So it makes sense on all fronts for the Bears to trade Justin Fields, get what you can from him, draft Caleb, you reset the quarterback clock, you still have mm -hmm. DJ Moore, and then you still have the 109. I think that's the perfect comp where you could look at by year three, Josh Allen was the dude. Mm -hmm. Right. And we're still having questions about Justin Fields. Now, it just so happens that the Bears have the number one pick. So it makes this decision a little bit easier. Like if the Bears had pick 14, I don't think this would be as much of a conversation. So what are you doing? Are you buying? You selling? You holding on on Justin Fields? I mean, obviously, everything depends on what else is on your roster. I'm sure if you have Justin Fields, he's probably your QB2 at this point. I'm going to see what I can get. I'm never not going to see what I can get just because I, I'm i not sure about his long-term prospects. You know, we've seen, we've seen Baker Mayfield kind of bounce around, right, as a top number mm -hmm. one overall draft pick, bounce around. You know, he found a really nice home in in tampa bay this year but baker mayfield's in like year like seven or eight or something like that so and and he finally was able to be as productive as he was like am i do i want to sit around till year seven or eight before i get some return on my investment no thank you i think justin fields has a tremendously high ceiling but there's just way too much uncertainty with him that I, and i wasn't a fan to begin with yeah i'd, I'd look to sell if I if I got a, a solid enough package, maybe I can move up in a draft. I could package Justin Fields with something else and maybe upgrade to a little more of a stable quarterback situation. So, yeah, I mean, he's right around guys like uh, Purdy, T-Law. I'd rather have Purdy. T-Law, I, I mean, T-Law's, you know, interesting. Jack, but I mean, he's like a mid to late first is basically what they have him here in, in keep trade cut. He is a quarterback. What? 15. Justin Fields has played 12 games his rookie year, 15 games in 2022 and 13 games last year. You know, his style of play is also a concern and something that we haven't really touched on in this particular segment. So mm -hmm. that's also something as well, where he's got to stay healthy, right? He's got to protect himself. He's got to go into the Lamar Jackson 2023 bag and say listen even though i have a really high rushing ceiling i have to be better as a passer and i mm -hmm. have to be on the field for 16 17 games like it's that simple so you know he finished uh qb 18 this year and based on his adp that's what that's not what you were looking for at a justin fields this year is qb 18 I think if he does go to Atlanta, where you're talking about, where you have, you know, the Bijan, you have Pitts, you have Luna, you've got guys that you can get the ball to. It's not all on Fields's kind of shoulders as much. Where you know now he's got weapons to kind of to kind of do some damage. I mean, you had DJ Moore there on the Bears. 
that's about it. O line is trash. I mean, what what are you what are you gonna do? It's better for him to even move on at this point, especially when like people already have that sour taste or there's questions. Mm -hmm. Like you don't even want to be there at that point. So I think he knows he's gonna be out the door. Um, it's just a matter of you know where where's he gonna go? What are they gonna get from? It just wasn't optimal for a guy like Fields. Like they that wasn't his strengths. Like they weren't playing to his strengths. Like you know. In Atlanta, at least you can have the run game. You've got a good defense, right? So it, it helps him a little bit more. And, you know, a guy like Caleb who kind of – who makes plays off, you know, when things are off and kind of creates on his own, like that could be a little bit of a better fit for Chicago at the moment, especially with that broken-ass down O-line. I think all in all, it's just a better all-around to just go to go to somebody else. And, again, it's not like we don't like fields, but, the, listen, he's got one year. Everything's on the line pretty much right now. So, Would you feel differently if fields ended up in Vegas about um, his I mean, stock? it's still it's, – it's, it wouldn't be as great as Atlanta, but you still got guys that can play. You got Jacoby Myers. You got Devontae Adams. Like, I mean – you still got some weapons and you've got a team that, that wants you. And that is, you know, put in their, put in their trust in you. And you got a guy like Devonte Adams on your squad who will, who will go to bat for you. So well, I actually, I just, I actually, I shouldn't say that because his boy, Derek Carr got his ass tossed and Devonte couldn't do shit about it. So, <laughs> and also too, another thing we have to factor in is, is the team that trades for Justin Fields, right? They're going to have some big decisions coming up that fifth year option as well mm -hmm. as the long-term extension. So that's another factor, another layer that we're talking about when it with, with the Justin Fields thing. But it looks like he's going to be traded in the next couple of weeks. Just makes all the sense in the world. But I, I think at this point that there is if the 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 question that there is even a question kind of is really what's going on. Like if they wanted to really keep him, like I think polls would have just came out and said, listen, Justin Fields is our guy. We've seen him improve the last three years. And, you know, we're going into next season with him as our guy, you know, we're just deciding what we're going to do, you know, with this number one pick. Like, I, I think that would be the case if they really felt confident and they were really going to actually keep him. I, I definitely sure. think you could get more for him. And that's kind of why I would be on the selling end is because I think I could get a really, really good haul. Now, if he goes to Atlanta, obviously his his stock is going to go up even higher because you see the weapons, et cetera, like you mentioned before. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, I guess I would be in the hold situation, hold ready to sell. I guess that's the best gotcha. way to put it. Jonathan's holding. That's a, it's a good idea to hold because you can wait until that yeah. move. You yeah, can wait yeah. until the move happens. Like, well, if, if he does go to Atlanta, boom, that's that. That's the window, right? Because yep. uh, you could argue, like, the the time to buy him, maybe it isn't now. Like, it, it was during the season when, mm -hmm. you know, his value was so low and we had all these questions earlier. First price to increase again, exactly. If you want to – we always talk about playing the market. It's not always just about the player – Put these guys in tiers, who's in the top of the tier, who's in the bottom of the tier, move throughout the tier, right? Pick up assets, you know, move up in the tier, move down in the tier, and do it at the right times. People get so caught up with like, all right, who's your wide receiver? Fuck, nine, 10, 11. Like wide receiver nine to like 26 is like one <laughs> big tier. Like literally, it's one huge tier. So you can move up and down and take advantage in certain times. We always talk about that playing the market, going, you know, doing things at the right time.